second thing here is the greatest ability we possess is availability. What God is looking for us is not talented people. As I said Sunday, God doesn't need talent. God doesn't need talent. He needs, he's looking for people to say, I'm yours, flow through me. And as we work through this, the first thing we're going to note is that there are no superstars among us. Ain't no LeBrons here. Mm -hmm. No LeBrons. There are no superstars. Now, I understand in Christendom, we don't believe that. We get hyped up about certain people, and we act like they're the bomb. And we, we want to trade for them. We want to trade for them. But I think the truth, if you understand, that verse says, you know, the verse, the verse speaks of the fact that we're united. We're one. It's talking about, and it says there ought to be humility. No one ought to think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. We're all on the same plane. So you don't get hyper about yourself. And you don't get hyper about others. There's no such thing as Christian idols. You know? I'll never forget when we lost our senior pastor when I was in Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, another church came and stole him. They came, made him a good offer, he left. So in a, in a, in a great moment of spirituality, one of the women in our church said, what we need to do is go out and steal ourselves, a senior pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Trade for a senior pastor. That's what we should do. Get the best. Let's see if Billy Graham's available. Let's see if Franklin Graham's available. Maybe stealing from their organization. There are no superstars among us. God is not looking for individuals who will give him their great talents. He is looking for individuals who will give him their hearts. He will supply all the talent and ability necessary. So what, what does God want from me? My heart. All of it. But there are also no scrubs among us. Now you may not know what a scrub is, so let me explain it to you. <laughs> Growing up in Massachusetts, I was a fortunate kid in that we had the baseball field at my house. I was fortunate because I was not a good baseball player. So, if they were going to play baseball in the neighborhood, where were they playing? Yeah. My house. So, almost. <laughs> almost. I was, I was nine, a friend of mine was eight, another friend of mine was nine. And they had a rule for us. It was a terrible thing they would say. He can play. His runs don't count and his outs don't count. <laughs> so you know what that is? That's a scrub. If your runs don't count and your outs don't count, you're a scrub. Just remember, that's humiliating. When you get a little bit older, you got your runs and your outs to count. But there are no scrubs, scrubs among us. Everybody counts. So you don't look down on yourself and you don't look down on someone else. Nobody, nobody is unimportant. Everybody is important. Now that's hard sometimes to work through. Anne Marie is here and she remembers Doretha. Does anybody else remember Doretha here? Dore yes, Rose. Remember. I don't know what Doretha's spiritual gift was supposed to be. But Doretha could not speak. She had a learning disability and a physical disability. I don't know if she'd been abused, but she was about 41 years old when she was here with us. She couldn't speak. I'm not making fun of her. She was like, I don't know, I'm willing. I want you to, and you couldn't understand her. And she, she didn't look right. Her teeth were messed up. And the scariest thing about Doretha, though, is she believed her ministry was the nursery. So, if a woman in the church had a baby in service, Doretha would take it upon herself to go and attempt to take the baby downstairs to nursery. I tell you, baby, you can imagine, I, I can remember, during the service, watching Doretha struggle with a woman <laughs> trying to take the baby downstairs and go, oh my goodness, oh no, Doretha, leave the woman's baby alone. But she thought her ministry was nursery. It was not. The way we did nursery with her is we put a couple people with her in nursery. But Doretha had a ministry. Every time I gave an invitation in our church, the first one down to break the ice was Doretha. 
sitting at the altar crying over what was wrong in her life. It broke the ice for everybody. I don't know what they call that spiritual gift. Coming forward first and crying. I'm not sure what that gift is. But when Doretha had to move away, we lost something special. We didn't lose no scrub. We lost somebody we needed. We lost somebody as a team player. And her ministry wasn't nursery. But we lost Aretha. But we shouldn't look down on ourselves. Don't walk around going, I, I don't have anything to offer. I'm just a poor sinner. Come on, man. That's false humility anyway. <laughs> but don't look, on, don't look down on somebody else. In heaven's eyes, there are no losers. There are also no soloists among us. None of us can do what we do without others. For every great sermon preached, there are people who prayed like mad. For every bad sermon preached, there are people who prayed harder. <laughs> we rise and fall together. We rejoice and hurt together. That's the nature of what we do. Um, and if you have a ministry, you have a gift, even if you've not found your niche, and you say, you know what, they don't need me today. You're missing it, man. You're missing it. Because though I may have taught and taught well, you may be a mercy shower and somebody needed mercy and you didn't show. You were too busy at Pillow Presbyterian or Bedside Baptist. And somebody missed out on what you had. They needed what you had. Where were you? I didn't come in. It looked like it was going to rain. Or I didn't come in. I didn't feel like it was important. I come. You have something to offer. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. Great catchphrases anyway. 1 Corinthians 12.12 12 says this. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Many members, but how many bodies? One. That there should be no schism in the body. But that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We're all in this together. Everybody's important. But there are not, there is not sameness among us. There is diversity, right? Yes. We've been given different gifts. At a church like ours, we can say we've all come from different backgrounds. Looks like the cafeteria at the UN. And I may have one thing to offer as somebody from Western Massachusetts, and you may have one thing to offer as being somebody from Western Argentina. <laughs> they may even be the same gift, but they reflect or come across differently. And if two of us are the same... One of us is unnecessary. And I'm voting that it's you. <laughs> right? If any two of us are the same, one of us is unnecessary. So there, the fact that we're not the same is great. It's diversity. It's a wonderful thing. 1 Corinthians 12, 14 and 27 says, For in fact the body is not one member but many. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, am I not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? See how stupid that is? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a hand. I want to be a foot. I don't want to be a foot. I want to be a hand. I don't want to be an ear. I want to be an eye. Imagine what the body of Christ would look like if it was just one big eye. Deform. Deform, make you want to throw up. Or just one big ear. No, thank you. But there is support among us. We are mutually dependent and we are incomplete without each other. We need each other to accomplish what God has called us to accomplish. We have to have each other. Without each other, we will not succeed. There is no person that can do the whole job. None. 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 <laughs> so we need each other. 1 Corinthians 12, 20 and 21 says, But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. 
nor again the head of the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. So we all, whatever your particular giftedness and bent is, we need it. Now we need you to be spirit controlled, spirit led, and where you ought to be. But we still need you. We need you to serve. Finally, there is specialness among us. Verses 6 to 8. There is specialty in the body of Christ. We have a special resource from God. That's called our spiritual gifts. When a person becomes a believer in Christ, God imparts to them a spiritual gift. That spiritual gift is to be used for the benefit of the body of Christ. And you may have one or two gifts, but those gifts are part of who you are. And we can't survive without your gifts. Well, what are the gifts? Well, prophecy, and this is Franklin Graham. I put him up here because I think Franklin Graham has the gift of prophecy. All right? The ability and desire to declare God's revelation. It is as much foretelling as it is foretelling. Foretelling means to proclaim. Foretelling means to predict. If you look at the prophets in the Old Testament, most of the time they spent not telling you what was going to happen. They spent yelling at you for what did happen. <laughs> and that's what a prophet does. If you see wrong behavior and you just have to say something, this is you. If you just can't help yourself, this is you. And then there's another gift called the gift of ministry. We get our word deacon from this word. It is the ability and desire to serve in helpful ways in God's work, usually behind the scenes. That's Judy. Judy, Judy Shovelin. And that's, uh, is that Arthur and, and Jose cooking? Yeah, yeah I, think they, I think it's also the ability to want to skip church and go down and cook. But it, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. If you see work that needs to be done and you just have to do it, this is you. I know this is not me because I can see work and not do it. <laughs> okay? And then there's teaching. The ability and desire to clearly instruct in the scriptures in an understandable way. If you see some misunderstandings or questions and you just have to explain things, this is you. This is me with a guy in New Orleans trying to explain to him something, I'm sure. He just, he's trying to get away. Please let me go. I'm here. Right? Yeah, you, 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 I got you, man. Anybody see Sam's face here? Exhortation is the ability and desire to encourage and motivate others to action in God's work. I think Sam's a, a, a pure exhorter. 